Good evening, good morning, good night. We're watching this transmission. Desai, Mike Martin's bringing you a very impactful article here by The Conversation, Business and Economy section here. And just when you thought that Australia has already had the short end of the stick when it came to housing, Australia was competing for foreign, uh, foreign investors uh, with deep pockets. Uh, Australia had uh, first-time buyer's loans. Australia had uh, everything they could do, lower interest rate, historically low levels, and let the public, I guess, buy into these overly inflated housing. Sure, you could afford a million-dollar house if the interest rate is below 1%, but when interest rates start to tick upwards because of a nice, strong economy, guess what happens? People can't afford People can't afford to make payments anymore or service their debt. Now, I've spoken of the Opal Tower and that other tower there in Sydney. I forgot the name of it. It's it's named after one of the Muppets, I think. It was the Opal Tower, another tower with um, problems, manufacturing problems, engineering problems, maybe assembly problems, maybe builder problems, where buildings are built fast or fast to a point so they can get them off Get them, unload them, and sell them to the to their potential future customers. Right now, we got a problem here. <coughs> now, dangerous to human health. Just when you thought it, you know, you got the worst of the worst. It ain't over yet. That's a housing problem much bigger than a few high-profile apartment blocks. Australia's biggest city is a buzz. With news of yet another housing development declared unsafe for human habitation. This time it is apartments built on a toxic, a toxic dump. The local council fears was not properly cleaned up. So they're fearing that it wasn't cleaned, it wasn't organized. They have to have these, when you build over a dump, because I know uh, when I visited Portugal, they had an ethanol like garbage dump plant. They have these little smokestacks, and then they would connect, they would cover up the dump, but they won't build houses on them. They would say warning hazard all over the place. Then they put these 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 little smokestacks to release the ethanol or the, the dangerous fumes of gases. In turn, it would go through some sort of a system and it would power a small city, a small town, the ethanol the the, the dump. But unfortunately here, they've built modern housing over a dump i think it's got to settle they got to fill it settle then fill it settle let it sit let it sink refill i'm not sure how to like that's that's a big move you know all 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 terrain all dirt is created unequally not all dirt's created equal so it sits and and then put housing creating foundations on anyways the past 12 months Three other significant Sydney developments have been evacuated to major building defects. The plight of residents forced from their homes has focused national attention on issues to do with shoddy apartment construction, such as poor regulation and lax enforcement. So, <clears throat> I'm not blaming the engineers on this one. I think the engineers do everything to spec because the engineers aren't I know they're under the gun or they're under the tight restraints by the builder to keep it in cost and to keep it within check. But I don't think a lot of engineers are going to lose or risk losing their licensing to cut back on some concrete. I don't think it's worth it, right? So I think it has a lot to do with the builder. I'm not saying the builders are bad builders. I just think the builders are trying to cut corners to save. That's where I'm thinking it is right there, you know? What gets less media attention is a greater seismic problem. The fact that hundreds of thousands of Australians are forced into inadequate or unhealthy housing by high housing costs. Thousands are evicted by landlords wanting higher rents. Some end up homeless. These problems are underlined by the latest data of housing occupancy and costs from the Australian Bureau of Statistics. Growing disparities. These figures show that the excess of, of housing on average, but not enough for those in the greatest need. Across Australia, 
There is an estimated 116,000 people are homeless, while more than 300,000 households would like a home with an extra bedroom. Yet, there are about 12 million empty bedrooms. One third of Australian homes have one unused bedroom. Another third, another third have two, and 13% have three or more. As you might expect, homeowners are more likely to have an excess of bedrooms, while renters are more likely to need more space. And we're increasingly a nation of renters than owners. Now, 32% of households rent in compared to 27% a decade ago. The main reason for all this is, unspiringly, is escalating housing prices. So, I've been talking about this for many years, and um, <clears throat> I'll play it here for you guys. I've been talking about this for for many years now. It's not uh, it's not a um, a secret. It's not. Let me lower the volume on this so I don't get flagged. Hold on. So let's see what I was predicting years ago. Let's see what I was predicting years ago. All right, Sydney Vancouver, a uh, Sydney Vancouver housing crash, forty seven percent by twenty sixteen. So I was off by a lot. You know why? It's because I wasn't expecting all the. Uh, the underlying things that the governments and the banks were gonna uh, propose, right? If they left these, if they left these um, economy running on autopilot, it would have crashed twice by now. So Sydney Vancouver housing crash, forty seven percent by twenty sixteen. So I was reading this in twenty fifteen, and that's what I was, uh, that's what I was forecasting, right? Then Canada, UK, Australia, and then I added New Zealand debt prison. This is from November 11, twenty fifteen. And then we go into, what else do, a couple of others. Uh, oversupply coming in 2016, supply versus demand illusion. So there's an oversupply now on the market in Sydney, Vancouver, uh, Toronto. There's a mass oversupply on the market. And uh, because we were feeding this illusion of supply versus demand for many, many years. And that's what our politicians were selling us, hook, line, and sinker. And I knew that, were full, I knew that was a bunch of garbage. And then what else? Sydney, Vancouver, Auckland, London, massive housing correction, spring 2017. Now, here's the thing. When I made this, when I read this story, guys, this was already at the time when London was already dropping like a rock. And I think London was going already eight months of decline, eight months of consistent decline in a row. And yeah, I was I was really on this. Uh, hook. I was really on this because I was feeling... The um, a lot of imperfections, and this is a documentary I was gonna throw together, but <clears throat> I don't think so. I don't think you guys need to know this anymore because everyone, you know, knows what's going on, right? So oversupply on the market, and it's no joke. We can't go like this. Fourth block of units abandoned in Sydney. This is really scary, guys. And you know why they do it? You know why they do it? Because they want your money. That's what they want. Your money. They don't care about you. They don't care that you got a place to live. They don't care. Well, they care that you got the place so they can make the sale. But it's all about sales in this land of milk and honey now. Whatever happened to brotherhood, brotherly love, you know, um... Hospitality, Southern hospitality, whatever happened to that? Where we look out for each other and say, yo, dude, we can't sell this guy this place. What are we doing here, guys? Why are we doing this to each other? It's no joke. We cannot go on like this. Fourth block of units abandoned in Sydney. In Eric's uh, Escrinville apartment, development remains a ghost town more than 12 months after it was completed with the city of Sydney refusing to allow owners to move in over fears a developer did not properly clean up the toxic land underneath it. The Herald's revelation that owners have been prevented from living in the 4th Sydney apartment building over safety concerns comes less than 24 hours after an emergency meeting between the state and federal governments over the, the country's building standards crisis. So, Sydney's headed towards a building standard crisis. So is Melbourne. Probably Perth, because I know in Perth before the 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 bust the 
mining bust when before mining went bust they were throwing up these things like they were no one's business yeah it was the mascot tower the 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 zetland mascot and opal tower apartments across sydney have all been evacuated in at least the last 12 months due to major defects so remember on christmas christmas eve 2018 everyone was evicted from their house or christmas day christmas eve christmas eve there were known defects of, uh, of the Ericksonville de development, the 109 sugar cube apartments, and the 18 Honeycomb Terrace were built at the same old Ashmore Industrial Estate of uh, uh, Eskernville with construction finish in April 2018, according to the promo to promotional material. Now let's look at the timelines. You got the Opal Tower, then you got that other place, the um, the Mascot Tower. But the mascot tower is 12 years old, right? 10 or 12 years old. So it's starting to see shifts in its foundation and noises. And, and, and people are listening to this while they're in their apartments and wondering, ah, it's an old building. It was built at the turn of the century. No, it wasn't. Buildings built at the turn of the century are still up. They're still functional. Okay. Uh, furious buyers who paid upwards of a million for a for for a slice of a sweet life have been left demanding answers over why they have been left in limbo some purchase off the plan as far back as early 2015 oh my god how can they do this to them i i just i just guys i just don't understand how people could do this to each other million bucks for one of these things in a statement to the herald <coughs> city as a, a sydney spokesperson said the developer had not complied with the development consent conditions concerning the remediation of the site so manufacturing had left behind a cocktail of toxic substances on the land including heavy metals hydrocarbons asbestos and contaminated groundwater. The city is in an ongoing discussion seeking resolution with the developer Golden Rain Development P PTY lot. We understand that this is the most frustrating situation for all Terrence and apartment owners, the city of Sydney spokesperson said. Golden Rain Development did not return to the Herald's calls on Thursday. The company's website said it had a strong reputation in all facets of property development established over the last 15 years. Golden Rain has completed 30 projects across Asia and Eskinville Development is its flagship project in Sydney. Buyers have taken to the city of Sydney's social media pages to vent their frustrations about the never-ending saga. They complained of being forced to put their lives on hold as they stayed in spare bedrooms, Airbnbs, and elderly parents' homes. All of our possessions are in storage or in bags and boxes, one man wrote. We have had an extended uh, our loan, our home loan, six times while we wait. It's no, it's it's a joke. We we can't go on like this any longer. Another man complained he was utterly appalled by the lack of communication and transparency from all parties involved. Constantly waiting for even the slightest shared of info to never-ending saga leaves us feeling drained and anxious about the future of our apartment. The City of Sydney spokesperson said it had been in regular contact with the number of purchasers. The developer had requested it address the contamination via an environmental management plan which would require ongoing site monitoring. The council had requested the plan be formally submitted in an application to change the existing development approval. The council has also asked for further testing and potentially further uh, remediation works at the Honeycomb Terrace site, public areas and roads giving access to the Sugar Cube apartments. The development is situated on the corner of uh, Mater's and Zenith Street, about 400 meters from the Ariskinville station. The council spokesperson said it was reviewing further test results 
and a risk assessment provided by the developer, it would likely seek further information. We will continue to work with our developer until we are satisfied they've taken all necessary steps to ensure the site is suitable for residential purposes, the spokesperson said. <coughs> uh, here it is. Um, volatile chemicals can move into the building, uh, ambient air confined spaces or excavation on site, a briefing from the Department of Environmental said. The potential risk of human health from this exposure pathway should be evaluated. So this is what's happening, people. This is the, the Zetland Terrence apartments expected to fetch up 1.2 million each are allegedly unsustainable because of the evacuation of lofts immediately above them. So this is the other center here. This is really scary, guys. This is really, 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 really scary, guys. I'm not liking this at all. <coughs> Sorry, guys. I got a summer cold. One of the worst ones to get. It's scary. The, the, it, because... You know, you got engineers, you got city planners, you got all the red tape from the city, you got the permits, you got all this crap. Why would they do something like this when when they know all the red tape they have to go through to get this done? It's the almighty dollar. That's what it is in the end. The amount of empty homes sitting in Sydney, vacant homes owned by foreign investors, do you honestly think? Do you honestly think? I mean, anyone looked into that and started fixing that problem so people don't have to? Pay one and one point two million dollars for an apartment. What are these things? Are these things like the Taj Mahal? Are they made of brass and gold for that much money? Let's do a little bit of uh, let's do a little bit of searching here. Let's find out what the heck is going on down in the U.S. My friend's trying to sell his place in Florida, and he can't he can't find anything. All right, guys. So. Uh, he can't see he, he's got so many so many houses so many houses for sale competing with him in the two hundred thousand dollar range and that was uh let's say uh four hundred thousand <coughs> here you go so many homes guys which ones do you want this is a beautiful home Six bedroom, five bath, 4,768 4, square feet, 360,000 in West Palm Beach, Florida. 33407. My, that was my almost my zip code when I lived in Florida. It's been 234 days on the, on the market. And, oh, what about heating that place, Mike? It's Florida. What about hurricanes? Look, it still has windows on there for the last, I don't know, 15, same windows for the last 15, 20 years. Everyone always finds ways to... To say that, oh, you know, this isn't safe. No, man, you dump you dump thirty grand of thirty grand into this house to clean it up. You oh look at those look at that hardwood flooring. You could sand this down. Oof, look at the rooms. Oh, that fixer upper three sixty. Oh no, you get you get one of those toxic sugar cubes there for for a million bucks. Let's see what else we got in, in store for us here. I looked at this one first. This looks nice. 390. That's nice. That's US, so that'd be like 4 475 480 Australian dollars. Almost uh 3100 square feet. Let's see what we can find up here. Let's go to like Central Florida if people are scared of hurricanes and stuff. I went through so many hurricanes, Hurricane Wilma, Hurricane, um, oops, I clicked on something. Oh, beautiful starter home for a family. Five bedrooms, three bath. Beautiful starter home. Good beginner home for a family to get started. Price cut of 10K. You show up there with 30,000 less, they'll sell it to you. Let's move a little bit further north. Growing cities. <clears throat> oh, we're in Atlanta now. We're in Georgia, sorry. 
Tallahassee's really nice. Tallahassee's growing. They buy a nice, beautiful uh, colonial style home. Three ninety nine. And once you get into Georgia, things get a lot cheaper. Oh, this one. This house is not even five years old. 384. Not even five years old. Look at this thing. So, so for me, living, like living and understanding and geographically living in so many, so many different places... And it, it got to a point where it's like Vancouver, right? So Vancouver, this house in Vancouver is like $7 million in, in a suburb. This is not a $7 million house, guys. That, and that's what I was kind of throwing out there, right? When I, when I moved to Vancouver and I started doing my channel before my first channel got deleted, I was looking at it and saying, wait a minute, this house should be worth maybe 350,000, maybe 400 max. How is this house in Vancouver worth 4 million dollars? 5 million bucks. Here, I'll show you guys what I'm talking. Oh, Mike, have you been to Sydney? Do you know what you're talking about? I've been to Vancouver. I know what I'm talking about. Any any country that's open for business that's still under the British Commonwealth is open for business. Trust me. I know how open for business works when it comes to bringing in wealthy investors. Now, let's go to, what's it called? Um, uh, what's it called? Um, MLSRealtor.ca here. Now, I'll show you guys what you're looking at in Vancouver. So I'll put the, my Vancouver postal code. So we have to, hold on, that's a trailer home. So let's get to... Oh, it's showing homes in Merritt here. Let's get to to Vancouver. All right. So there's nothing here. So we got to, these are rentals for 14000 a month. Let's find here. Okay, minimum price. You got to go, to find a house that size, you got to start at around $2 to about $4 million bucks. Let's see if we could find one here. That's a, like, here you go. There's a house. There's a couple of them actually right there. Here's one right here. So it's kind of similar to the one we just saw. <clears throat> so there it is, two million bucks. And this house, oh, is there a fence going through the middle? I'm not sure, but annual property tax, almost 6,000. So you see what I'm saying? To get a house... This is four bedrooms. It's even smaller. And the square footage is even almost half the square footage. Holy crap. Of the one we saw for 300000 So I'm not seeing compare. I'm not like, okay, Mike, they're saying, well, you're comparing Canada to, to the U.S. But the infrastructure down in the U.S. is more, it's more broader, more bigger, right? Then when you go over here, like in Vancouver, everything starts at two, three million bucks right here. See, two, three million, two, three million. 2.3, 2.4, and these are just two bedroom condos. Then when you get out here, this is where I was looking to buy a house was this area here originally, and I saved up all my money. And there's so many of them for that price here. Look, $2.5 million. That's $2.5 million. It's, it's ridiculous, right? Three bedrooms. What else we got here? Another one here for 2.275. That's what you're getting, right? So I'm not sure why people are so wrapped into this slave in Slavelandia here. Like Slavelandia starts in Sydney. It goes all around the Commonwealth. The UK. UK has been in massive decline anyway. And then wouldn't you be better off getting something like this? And there's lots of jobs, right? Especially if you're a professional doctor, if you're a professional, and you can move your profession anywhere. You're looking at a thousand. This is including property tax, one thousand eight hundred a month for this place. And I don't think this needs any repair. I don't think you have to dump money into this thing. 
you know so that's including property tax right and you don't pay heat there um because it's still in the south of the united states in the south if you live in the south you're not paying for a lot of heat right you well, you don't pay for heat at all actually and if you want to go for more like uh, by mexi beach here panama city florida a little bit pricier but i mean you're still you're still not going out of your way to buy something right this is a gated community it's got a pool and it's more for retirees i guess and you're looking at about 1600 a month right so i mean 3000 square feet i mean there's these are new homes yeah oops that's just a photo of something <coughs> see new builder new builder in the three hundred thousand dollar range there's another one here there's a beautiful starter home 390 five bedrooms four bath raise a family send your kids to school you know it's kind of scary you know what people are paying for properties i mean i mean i could go down i could go down and show you homes for 110 to, to 210 to 225 this is the three hundred thousand dollar range right so this is the average median income affordability levels in these states right so when you go here let's go to i love jackson jackson mississippi let's go to new orleans right you could buy a beautiful home in new orleans for under 400k mansion if you want i love these ones with drive ups here gorgeous anyways guys don't forget to hit me up on the tip jar and paypal you could find it at the top of my channel don't forget to if you want to buy me a coffee on patreon i'm on subscribe star get off facebook and get on minds.com get on minds.com it's like facebook and i'm also on bitshoot get on bitshoot and find me mike Mar i'm mike underscore martins you find my channel at the top of my youtube channel go ahead and subscribe guys uh i got some of the documentaries i had in storage on a backup hard drive uploaded here on bitshoot and uh, it's a pretty good channel on BitChute. I'm, uh, I'm at 51 subs now. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'd like to know. Please leave your comments. Let us know. What are people, what are they buying into? And my fear of fears is people are massaged into this, into believing. And they have this massage mentality that, well, my friend paid $1.2 for a sugar block apartment. Uh, sorry, like um, an apartment unit uh, well i'm gonna get mine for 960 and i'm getting a deal i'm not gonna let him know because he'll be mad at the builder but the, the builder gave it to me for 960 how do people believe that that's worth nine hundred and sixty thousand dollars? that's this is what i can't fathom people this is i can't process this i'm still uncomputable it's like my my hard drive i'm a 41 year old man my hard drive has bad sectors i, I can't see I, comment below let me know just i'm maybe i'm severely mentally ill and this is what people should be doing paying a million dollars for an apartment and what was the other one that was down here 1.2 million dollars this family outside struggling here this one right here there's a family outside struggling with a baby in their arms it's like what's this all about like are you serious anyways comment below i look forward to reading comments thanks for watching